Hello friends, I'm Akash, and today I'd like to introduce you to my sister, Amrita. She's two years older than me, a junior in high school. She's very hardworking and simply the best sister that anyone could ask for. But there's something else that I want you to pay attention to. It's how my sister writes. You'll notice that she always uses her left hand to write. And that's because she is one of the 10% of people around the world who are left-handed. But the vast majority of people in the world are right-handed. That includes me. So why is my sister left-handed, but I right-handed? Well, let's find out. I'm Akash Cody, and a hearty welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, the simple answer to this problem is simply, we don't know. We just don't have enough actual scientific evidence to lead us to a conclusive answer on why some people are left-handed and others are right-handed. But we do have a few inklings that could eventually guide us towards the right answer or the left answer. One of those inklings is actually our genetics as human beings. If two parents are right-handed, the chance that their child will be left-handed is just 9% and that's the case for my sister. But if one of the parents is left-handed, that chance is increased to 19%. And if both are left-handed, then the chance is bumped up to 26%. That is over a one in four chance. And another potential factor in which hand is dominant could be your gender, because according to a 2008 meta-analysis of 144 studies, men are around 23% more likely to be left-handed than women. Although we used to believe that your dominant hand was decided by just a single gene, it turns out that it's likely many genes that together end up deciding whether you're left-handed or right-handed. But genetics still aren't necessarily everything when it comes to why some people are left-handed or right-handed. But there is an effect called brain lateralization that could potentially play a role in whether you're a lefty or not. Basically, our brain is divided into two hemispheres. We have the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The left hemisphere of the brain controls the right side of the human body, and the right hemisphere of the brain controls the left side of the human body. I know, it's a bit confusing, but all you need to know is that for most people, the left hemisphere of the brain is usually responsible for controlling cognitive functions like speaking and fine motor skills, which includes moving your dominant hand. The theory is that because the left hemisphere of the brain controls the right side of the body, the fine motor skills on the left side of the body are way more likely to control your right hand, thus making you right-handed. Around 96% of all right-handers have these fine motor skills in the left hemisphere of the brain. So, theory proven, right? Well, it falls apart when you realize that only around 7% of left-handers also have these fine motor skills in the left hemisphere, just like right-handers. But that reduced percentage is still pretty important, because the remaining 30% are other people who have fine motor skills in the right hemisphere, thus controlling their left hand, or they might be people who have these functions just spread evenly around the brain. This could be why, on average, left-handers have less left-right asymmetry in the brain compared to right-handers, because a lot of right-handers just have all of those stuff in one side of the hemisphere. Because almost all right-handers have those important skills on just one hemisphere in the brain. So, of course, the involvement of genetics and brain lateralization and all of these concepts may as well just be theories for why people are right-handed or left-handed, but these theories are related directly to nature and not nurture. It's probably why right-handed people have made up the majority of the human population for thousands of years. And evidence of this can be seen at caves, where the ancient paintings that our ancestors once made were preserved in pretty much perfect condition. Because it's a cave where no one goes. Some of these paintings include stencils of human hands, like this painting in Argentina. You can see that almost every single hand in this painting is a left hand. And as it turns out, what these painters were likely doing was they were putting their left hand on the wall and using their right hand to draw it out. 
And that means that guess what? The artists were probably all right-handed too. And I mean, isn't that interesting? So, so far we have talked about being right-handed. We have talked about being left-handed, but we haven't talked about being ambidextrous. Being ambidextrous means that instead of having just one dominant hand, either your right hand or your left hand, you can use both of your hands equally well. One out of every 10 people is left-handed, but only one out of every 100 people is ambidextrous. That's just 1% of everyone on Earth. I mean, if you're watching this video and you're ambidextrous, please let me know by commenting down below. And maybe subscribe while you're at it. Although some people are ambidextrous from birth, there are a lot of people who have learned to become ambidextrous. Since the vast majority of people are right-handed, the world that we live in is designed to fit right-handers more. And so, many ambidextrous people are naturally left-handed, but they have gotten used to tools designed for right hands over time. And now, they have an equal preference for both hands or they have varied preference for different tasks. Let's take the example of writing. In any language that goes from left to right, left-handers will get smudges on the writing because their hand is resting on the ink. But that doesn't apply for using your right hand. So some left-handers will pretty much just learn to write with their right hand. Another example is scissors, which have differently sized holes that fit with right hands, but not with left hands. So left-handers just have to scrunch their hand in to fit the space. So some left-handers will pretty much learn to control their right hand as well as their left hand when it comes to using these tools. But when it comes to being naturally ambidextrous, scientists are not 100% sure what the secret is. But using the brain lateralization theory, it could probably just be because their brains don't have a preference for which hemisphere handles the dominant hand so they simply don't have one. And I mean, that's pretty cool, right? So coming back to righties versus lefties, it might seem that given our world is so designed for right-handed people, being right-handed is way better than being left-handed. But lefties do still earn some positives. And one of them is in sports like tennis, cricket, baseball, boxing, fencing, and plenty more. Because way more athletes are right-handed than left-handed, many athletes just aren't used to facing off against left-handers. So when that actually happens in a tournament, they get knocked out really easily. And that gives lefties the advantage. So as much as our world is designed for right-handers, sometimes it's good to be a lefty. Thanks so much for watching. If you like my videos, then make sure to subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon so you don't miss another one of my videos ever again. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Love you, Akash.